There are many kinds of bonds that hold molecules and atoms together. The two most simple types of bonds are ionic and covalent bonds. A covalent bond is a bond where two atoms share their electrons. When you think of the word covalent, think of the word cove, which is an area where ships and boats can share the bay with each other. Covalent bonds usually occur between two non-metal elements. So if you take a look at the periodic table, the elements in dark blue are non-metals, but non-metals can also include the elements that are in the purple column in group 17, the halogens. On a side note, the metalloids which have characteristics of both metals and non-metals can be seen as the green staircase in the table. They are also able to form covalent bonds, depending on the element and what it's bonding with. Typically, covalent bonds have low melting and boiling points, they can also be liquid or gas, and they usually have a fixed or definite shape. So let's look at the element hydrogen. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, which means it has one electron, but it needs one more electron in its outer shell to be stable. So looking at the compound hydrogen gas, it has a molecular formula of H2. In H2 gas, two hydrogen atoms bond with each other, and they share their electron. Together they now have two electrons, and they have the same number of electrons as helium, which is enough for them to be stable. Notice in H2 gas that both sides have the same amount of electrons, and that they balance each other out. So in this case, the covalent bond is considered a nonpolar covalent bond. Neither side has extra electrons to make it too negative or too positive. Both sides are equal. A bond in which the electron pair is equally shared is called a nonpolar covalent bond. Now let's look at the compound hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid has a formula of HCl. Chlorine has 17 electrons, and seven of those electrons are in the outer electron shell. The outer electron shell can hold a maximum of 8 electrons, so chlorine and the rest of the halogens only need one more electron to be stable. So when hydrogen binds with chlorine, hydrogen shares its one electron with chlorine, and chlorine shares its one electron with hydrogen. Now both atoms are stable. There are so many more electrons surrounding chlorine, Chlorine is a big molecule and has a very high electronegativity compared to hydrogen. Because of this, the electron cloud tends to shift more towards chlorine. The chlorine side of the molecule will have a slightly negative charge, and the hydrogen side will have a slightly positive charge. A polar covalent bond occurs when the electrons between the two atoms are not shared equally. So hydrochloric acid is held together by a polar covalent bond. Now let's look at ionic bonds. An ionic bond is a bond where there is a transfer of electrons between atoms. When you think of the word ionic, think of the word in as if you're going inside somewhere, sort of like an electron being transferred in to the other elements. Ionic bonds usually occur between a metal giving away its electron to a non-metal that receives the electron. The elements that are the metals are the alkali metals in group 1 and the alkaline earth metals in group 2. But then there's also other metals including the elements in yellow, the transition metals. These are the exception to the rule because transition metals can form both ionic and covalent bonds. The metalloids that we talked about earlier can also form ionic bonds. Ionic bonds make ions, and an ion is an atom or molecule that has either a positive or negative charge. A cation is an ion with a positive charge, and an anion is an ion with a negative charge. Ionic bonds generally have melting points and boiling points that are high, they are normally solids, and they usually don't have a definite shape. So let's look at the example of sodium chloride, the fancy name for table salt. Sodium has one electron in its outer electron shell. That shell needs seven more electrons to be stable and have a total of eight electrons. The easiest thing for sodium to do is lose that electron. So when it binds to chlorine, the electron that belonged to sodium will now be transferred to chlorine. Sodium is the metal transferring its electron to the non-metal chlorine. Now sodium has more protons than electrons and will have a positive one charge. Chlorine now has more electrons than protons and will have a negative one charge. 